fix it. Back to Patreon sponsored reviews for this week, and this time, the patron requested that I compare two episodes of the iconic, long-running British medical drama Casualty in case the outfit didn't give it away. Now, I was pretty excited about doing this for a few reasons. One, medical shows are a particular favorite genre of mine. And two, there's always the chance, when you're dealing with an old British show, of running into a Doctor Who actor. Casualty is a show that started running in 1986 and is still chugging along today, almost four decades later. And it's been running continuously in that time. No breaks, so not even Doctor Who can tout that. For a country where a lot of their shows have relatively short lifespans, that's an achievement. I would go into the basic premise, except that of the two episodes that I was asked to compare, one of them is the first episode ever aired, and the other is the 30th anniversary special, so that stuff will be covered later on. But I will say that basically it centers on the emergency department of Holby City Hospital and has had several spin-offs to focus on other aspects, including the main hospital department and the police. So it's kind of like the dragnet of the UK. Given the changes in both the genre of television and the world at large, how did the two episodes stack up against each other? Let's find out. This is Casualty. <laughs> The first episode of Casualty, entitled Gas, features the ER department night shift of Holby City Hospital, run by Ewart Plimmer, who to me feels a lot like Hawkeye Pierce in control of a hospital, concerned more about the necessity of saving lives rather than official hospital red tape. He's reprimanded by a superior and told that they've got six months to prove that their department is needed or else they're shut down for good. The main staff of the hospital include Charlie Fairhead, the head nurse, who will become very important later on, and Dr. Baz Samuels, inverting the more traditional and likely more American setup of a female head nurse and a male doctor, as seen in most medical shows on TV in the States at the time. The one coming to mind for me right now is Trapper John M.D. There are a lot of other characters, but I'll go into them as they and if they become relevant. The main plot concerns a group of dock workers who all come down to the hospital with identical chemical burns and symptoms, and much like that guy from the emergency comic, refuse to reveal how they got their injuries. However, the British doctors are a lot nicer about it than Brackett was. Don't try to con me, doc. Just fix me up and let me out of this joint. We have no medication for stupidity, mister. Though we see at the start that they were being observed by a mysterious woman from a distance. As the press jump on the mystery illness, the rest of the hospital is dealing with other issues, like Plimmer having to keep the press at bay, Nurse Clive King drinking on the job to deal with stress and being spotted by Nurse Megan Roach, and the hospital porter Cuba recognizing the smell of one of the burns, and enlists the help of the receptionist Susie to track down a record deep in the archives that had a burn with the same scent garlic. Chemical burns are bad, but hey, at least these chemical burns keep away vampires. There's also a subplot involving an ambulance driver who refuses to help out within the hospital when needed, who gets a dressing down from Plimmer, though the main point of interest regarding the ambulance driver is that his partner, Sandra Mute, who unfortunately only gets a few lines in this episode, is played by Lisa Bowerman, aka Professor Bernie Summerfield from Doctor Who. So it's true, Britain has only had six actors for decades. There's also a few subplot patients, including a little girl who drank something from the garage, and her mother keeps scaring the little girl to try to get her to talk, which obviously makes things worse, and a man insistent on getting treatment for a golf ball to the head who thinks that his minor injury should take precedence over the major chemical situation, which gets him sarcasm from Charlie and a telling off from Baz. What's going on? We're getting busy. No. Take your prescription and get yourself off the bed. Not till I get a bleeding sorry out of her. You shut up. I, uh, By the end of the episode, one of those who suffered from the burns dies, and they discover the chemical's name, Perofian, given to them by Cuba, who has to convince Baz to take him seriously when Charlie refuses to, earning Cuba the admiration and congratulations of the staff, while the mysterious woman, an old friend of Baz's, is revealed to have been the supervisor of the chemicals and is arrested due to her negligence. The 30th anniversary episode is a far cry from the first episode. While they're both classified as dramas, it's a true case study on how television has evolved over the last three decades. So, I go into these 
Patreon reviews, as long as they're something I've never seen before or never heard of, completely blind. So I'm told in the previously on segment that at the end of the last season, one woman runs another woman and her daughter off the friggin' road because of a previous dispute and just walks away like a stone-cold boss. Not even freaking out, just climbs in her car and drives away. The ball that takes. So, just so we're all on the same page here, apparently the dispute was that the woman who drove away is named Steph, and she was angry at Connie, the woman who she ran off the road, because she called child services, because Steph's daughter, a friend of Connie's daughter, Grace, was being abused at home and was taken away. So, clearly this woman has experience being horrible. I also want to apologize in advance, because I'm sure there are a lot of fans of the show out there, but because there are so many characters, and I really don't know most of them, I might not name everyone specifically, just for the sake of brevity. Returning to the action, it turns out that Steph drove a little bit away, and then called for an ambulance. But in the cruelest twist of fate, she gets run down by a car while making the call. Thankfully, that driver calls the authorities, and an ambulance arrives to take her to Holby City. Jacob, a nurse at Holby City, and on-again, off-again boyfriend of Connie, notices that Steph has injuries inconsistent with just getting run down, and when he hears about the damage to her car, fears the worst. Since he's been trying all day to call Connie and her daughter Grace, and neither picked up the phone. He pulls a paramedic team into the field, and after looking around the second crash site, they find the first crash site. Unfortunately, they have arrived too late, and Connie, who got thrown clear of the wreckage of the car, watched the car explode, presumably with Grace inside. Fortunately, Grace was also thrown clear and survived, uh, but they're both in pretty bad shape, with Grace needing to be airlifted out. Back at Holby, the rest of the staff is all a titter, planning Charlie's 30th anniversary party, and occasionally we see clips of former staff members leaving video messages for a big slideshow for Charlie's party. Charlie is dealing with a particularly annoying and cantankerous patient, played by Pam St. Clement, a notable former cast member of the similarly iconic EastEnders. She doesn't like Charlie much, but she bonds with him when they realize her medical issue is caused by an abortion she gave herself as a teenager. During Charlie's party, he gets choked up as he sees how much everyone loves him, but the party is cut short when the news about Connie and Grace hits. They kick in the gear to their credit, but Connie refuses treatment until Grace arrives, and unfortunately, this is just not Grace's day. While this was going on, a kid with divorced parents who don't like each other is given a drone as a present from his father, which his mother hides. After she leaves the house, the kid finds it, flies it, and accidentally sends it into the chopper carrying Grace, which crashes into the hospital, causing untold death and destruction. Jacob goes hard in saving Grace, and she's brought into the hospital, with most of it being evacuated except for the two worst cases, Grace and Connie, who can't be moved. Connie again refuses treatment and wants to stand by for Grace's, but she eventually collapses due to her own injuries. Interpersonal relationships and anger flies around, Jacob nearly throttles the kid when he confesses, before attempting to go after Steph, needing to be talked down by Charlie, Duffy, another original cast member who was around in the first episode, and Josh Griffiths, an ambulance controller who joined the show during the fourth series. Eventually, they do the best they can, and Connie and Grace undergo treatment, and the team rests following the long and tiring ordeal, with the entire team enjoying each other's company. The first episode is a really solid opener, and I like how they don't waste time with complex introductions. They drop us right into the action on a normal day of operations. There's some downfalls to that that I'll go into later, but I also like the unique gender swap of the traditional medical show. There's something interesting about Charlie being a nurse instead of a traditionally male role of doctor. I don't know how typical that was in the UK, but it was definitely not typical here. At least MASH had the excuse of the army isn't going to train male nurses because if a man can hold an instrument, he can hold a gun. So, good on the UK. I also really like the characters, especially Charlie, and I can see why he's lasted as long as he has. He is a genuinely good guy, even if he started out with a bit of a sarcastic, rebellious streak that seems to have tempered over the years. In fact, the two episodes as a whole are a really good back-to-back -back because they both show Charlie ignoring something important because of a crisis. First, Kuba's insistence on what the chemical was, all 
Though I don't blame him for dismissing Amira in the 30th anniversary episode, because she had been nothing but rude and standoffish from the beginning, and that wasn't the time for apologies. But good on them for making her evolve into a team player by the end. The 30th anniversary is absolutely Charlie's story, and it does a good job at showing his evolution over the 30 years, taking total charge of the crisis and helping Holby City work as a well-oiled machine. And despite the absolute cluster crap that the 30th anniversary was, and the fact that I don't have any of the build-up, so I don't necessarily care about the well-being of any of the characters, it was done well enough that going in completely blind... I was on the edge of my seat every time things took a t oh, turn for the worse with Connie and Grace, even though I barely knew them and only knew them as victims. I actually checked the wiki while I was watching because I wanted to know if they survived or not, given the three catastrophes that occurred. The stakes were that high for me. That was one of the downfalls of the first episode, is that there is a death, the death of one of the dock workers, and his wife is there and she cries, but... There's no emotional weight to it, at least that I felt. I had no connection to either Connie or Grace, but the 30th anniversary managed to drag me into the story in a way that the pilot could not. Another thing that was good about the 30th is that not only was the pacing really good, especially for a two-hour long episode, but all the stories were compelling and interconnected. Even the subplot with Pam St. Clement, which wasn't really connected, connected overall, still had a connection by showing that even when he's overwhelmed or stressed by a bad patient, Charlie never gives up. In addition, the 30th anniversary episode has great characterization. Some characters in the first episode were established well, namely Charlie and Plimmer, who really get to shine, along with Baz and Kuba, but most of the rest of the cast were either given nothing or short plot elements that held no weight. I knew Duffy was there, but I didn't notice her until the 30th anniversary episode. By comparison, the 30th anniversary episode gave everyone something to do, even the guest stars, and those arcs were done extremely well. Jacob's anger over what happened to Connie and Grace, that one paramedic refusing treatment to help out, the two that got trapped in the ambulance, they all had something to do, even if it was ultimately Charlie's day. A neat fact I also noticed is that the 30th anniversary episode features iconic British television actor Pam St. Clement from EastEnders, and because of Doctor Who Dimensions in Time, she has the distinction of having appeared on what I think are probably Britain's three most iconic series, even if her Doctor Who appearance is non-canonical. Plus Emmerdale Farm, so that's like the quad facta. I also really like the original arrangement of the theme as opposed to the one they use currently, but that's just my own tastes. Those synths, man. <laughs> first episode, while good for not wasting time with long introductions, is totally overloaded with way too many plot lines and characters. Plus, the pacing is sort of slow, although I will admit that is typical for dramas of the time in both the UK and America, so it's not really that big a deal. The 30th anniversary is guilty of being overloaded as well, but in fairness, the 30th anniversary has earned it. Plus, most of its plot lines are carryovers from the previous season, so they can't just abandon them. I will say, it is a bit overkill to put Connie and Grace through so much in such a short time. Sure, real life is chaotic and crazy, but was Grace a monster in a previous life to warrant that? And like I said before, I didn't really feel any emotional weight to any of the storylines in the first episode. I don't know Clive King, so the drinking wasn't something that made me angry or disappointed, because it was the first time I'd seen the guy. And this was in the first episode. It's not just my going in blind. They had to entice people to tune in the following week. I'm not sure they achieved that in my book, but clearly it worked, because the show's still on. I also found the plot really hard to keep track of. I needed a few wiki articles to nail down on my summary because it didn't feel entirely cohesive. For the 30th anniversary, it was fairly stellar, although I found that there was a lot of chat over the patients about personal drama. I know every medical show does it. Hell, MASH did it all the time. But it feels all the more glaring here because the patients are main characters that are close to the medical staff. Yeah, talk over the rando guest star of the week, whatever. Not your close friends who are near death. And again, Crashing Grace twice was just overkill. I think my one major gripe with the 30th anniversary is that it features almost none of the characters from the first episode, forgiven because a good chunk of either the actors or characters have passed or been 
killed off in the intervening time. But I feel like there's gotta have been someone else apart from Duffy from the first episode that's still alive in real life and in the show. Just to show a sense of growth. <laughs> preface this by saying that both episodes are great. There's some stuff I'd change, and we'll get to that, but ultimately, based on the two episodes I've seen, I can definitely see why the show has endured for as long as it has. The first episode should have taken a larger focus on the characters in the hospital rather than the general chemical plot because we needed to establish them in some way. I'd probably focus on only one or two characters, Charlie and Baz definitely, and I'd keep Cuba's plot intact if only because it was utterly charming. Plus the stuff with Plimmer still works as an overarching plot to essentially answer the question of whether or not the night shift is necessary. Perhaps, even if it was going to be so overloaded, it should have been a two-parter, and given the Clyde drinking plot room to breathe over two episodes, plus it would have extended the mystery of the garlic scent, which would have made for much higher stakes. Definitely worthy of a following week tune-in. And really, the only note I have for the 30th anniversary episode is for it to have featured more callbacks, maybe show a, a grown-up version of that little girl from the first episode who remembered Charlie, or a mirrored situation where Charlie is the one who identifies the garlic scent of the toxin. Although, one would hope that they've regulated that stuff far more stringently in the intervening time. When you do an anniversary, you want to throw in some references to the older stuff, and I felt that Casualty drew too much from the recent times, rather than the real classic stuff. But, then again, my only exposure is two episodes, so what the hell do I know? Oh, and maybe give Grace a break and cut out one of the catastrophes she has to endure? <laughs> So, which episode of Casualty is better? They're both great episodes, but I've got to give credit where credit is due, and the 30th anniversary episode is an absolute trip. The first episode is fine, but like any show, they're still fine-tuning everything, so naturally the episode 30 years down the line is going to be more structurally sound. But don't get me wrong, I enjoyed both episodes equally, given that I had no previous attachment to any era of the show. Although, this is really making me want to get back into Trapper John M.D. It is staggering how totally and utterly different the tone is between the first episode and the 30th anniversary. Like, Doctor Who's changes over the course of the 50 years were more so to condense the drawn-out stories into a more reasonable hour and just trimming out all the fat. But Casualty is a totally different show. Even the subplots got darker as the show went on. The subplot patients in the first episode were sort of darkly comedic. The rude proto-Karen guy, the kid with the overbearing mother, and then the subplot in the 30th anniversary is a woman who gave herself a failed abortion as a teenager, dealing with the ramifications decades later. Just incredible. I can't say if I'll actually become a regular viewer of Casualty, though given just how much there is, it's a pretty daunting task, but I will say that I would be interested to see the 40th or 50th anniversary episodes when they come out. I hope the patron enjoyed the review as much as I enjoyed Casualty, and I hope you all come back next time, where instead of a book, I take a look at an old pulp magazine. See you next time.
substances is revealed to have been the supervisor of the chemicals and is, neg uh, bleh, yeah, is neglected for arrestance.